and welcome to Mirror on the Metro. I'm John Deeris, and tonight we have, as a special guest, Archbishop John Nyssen. Archbishop, welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. It's, uh, we're really honored to have you on. Thank and you. Um, maybe you can tell us a little bit about uh, the Archdiocese of St. Paul, Minneapolis. Uh, you, you grew up uh, in Detroit? I grew up in the Archdiocese of Detroit. And um, I've been here for the last two and a half years. I was uh, appointed here as coadjutor archbishop by the present Holy Father, Pope Benedict XVI. And um, prior to that, for six years, I had been the Bishop of New Ulm. And interestingly enough, New Ulm just celebrated their 50th anniversary of being broken off from the Archdiocese. Oh, it was originally it part was of the, it. It was the 15 western counties uh, of the Archdiocese. So many of those uh, churches out there were founded by Archbishop Ireland or Archbishop Gregory. Um, we still have 12 counties here, uh, 6,000 square miles, and 217 parishes, um, 100 el Catholic elementary schools, and 14 Catholic high schools, in addition to our uh, hospitals and two uh, major universities. St. Yeah. Catherine, Catherine just became a university. And um, also two great seminaries. So it's a, it's a big archdiocese. I wanted to put a plug in for Father Marvin O'Connell, just put out this, uh, he just published this book on the history of the Archdiocese from 1840 to 1962 called Pilgrims to the Northland. And, and that is a story history, history isn't it? It is. It's very uh, rich history. Uh, Archbishop John Ireland was among the uh, first archbishops. I think he was third or fourth actually. But he, was he was actually the first archbishop. He was the third bishop, uh, Bishop Creighton, then Bishop Grace, and then uh, he, it was Bishop um, uh, Ireland. And then the archdiocese became an archdiocese. I see. It went from a diocese to archdiocese. Well, probably a lot of our listeners don't know the difference between a diocese and an archdiocese. Now, archdiocese is bigger, isn't it? Generally speaking, the archdioceses are a bit larger. And what it means is that um, an archdiocese is such because there are other suffragan sees. Uh, not suffering sees, sees but <laughs> suffragan they call them. Um, and here in uh, our uh, province, we have the province is made up of uh, three states Minnesota North and South Dakota and uh, each one of those dioceses for example Crookston or New Ulm those are, are called suffragan sees and so the archbishop has certain responsibilities to call those bishops together once a year to discuss mutual pastoral problems and finding different ways of relating to one another and using resources uh, amongst themselves and that sort of thing. So we here in St. Paul are the overarching kind of... We would be, yes. Uh, for, for all of those uh, dioceses. And um, I think I read that there are somewhere near 700,000 people, in, uh, Catholic people in, in the archdiocese. Correct, correct. Um, we say 650,000. Um, the Vatican really has the figure 800,000. But we have a lot of people who um, I believe have not registered in the parishes, so we, we go by the number of registered parishioners, which would be 650,000, probably better than that at this point, I think. Uh, to get to where you are, one first has to be, of course, a priest. Right. And then what happens after that? How, how does one get to this? Well, it's not something you do on your own. <laughs> um, I, from the time, well, my mother tells me I was three years old sitting at the kitchen table when the associate, we called them assistants in those days, the assistant pastor came over for dinner and he said, what are you going to be when you grow up? And I said, I'm going to be a priest, three years old. <laughs> so uh, a little precocious, I suppose. But I've, my great love has always wanted, wanting to be a priest. And um, uh, way lead on, led on to way, I became the auxiliary bishop in um, uh, the Archdiocese of Detroit. I served that position for five years, and, and then, then one can day... Can you tell me about an auxiliary bishop? An auxiliary bishop really means a helping bishop, and um, we have, thanks be to God, uh, the Holy Father just gave us uh, Bishop Piché, Lee Piché, who is my auxiliary bishop, and he works closely with me. Um, he's an auxiliary bishop, he's not the ordinary of the diocese. Interestingly enough, theologically, every bishop has to have his own diocese. So um, the archdiocese can only have one bishop, per se, and that's me. Um, but Bishop Pichet would have what's called a titular see. A uh, diocese, uh, for example, like Bardstown in Kentucky, which has been suppressed, but remains a, a diocese in, in name anyhow, so that it's always geographically located. So one would uh, probably, first of all, of course, be ordained. How long does it take a priest to be ordained? Uh, generally speaking, um, you do um, 
uh, you, you go into the seminary, uh, particularly day. There are some uh, seminary high schools, but normally a man would go into the college seminary and do four years, and then there would be another four-year period after that of theological studies. And in my case, there was also a year of internship as a deacon. So I was in a parish for as a deacon for a whole year. Mm -hmm. uh, before I became ordained a priest. So just to become a priest, you're talking about eight or nine years. Oh, for, for sure, yes. And then some priests are professionals, they're lawyers, they're architects. Many um, these days have already had a career and then they get the call. Uh, I was rector of a seminary in uh, Detroit and um, I found that my vocation, coming from very early on, was really kind of unusual. Uh, a number of men get the call when they're in college or even after college. Uh, I just finished a retreat uh, at King's House this past weekend where we had 12 men ranging anywhere from junior year of high school through uh, men who were out of college for two or three years. So uh, the path uh, to become an archbishop, and it's, <laughs> that's, I know that's a quite an honor to, be, to get to where you are. But um, it isn't something somebody runs for. It's not like a political office or no. something like that. It's something I one usually run in the opposite direction. direction. <laughs> <laughs> well, There's a lot of work, a lot of responsibility. But uh, then, then what happened to you as you were growing up in Detroit that uh, you became a priest in Detroit? I was ordained a priest for Detroit, yes. And I served as um, an associate pastor, then went off and did um, some more schooling. I finished my master's degree in theology came back and my Archbishop, Cardinal John Dearden, asked me to be his secretary. And that's been a great help uh, for me in this particular role because I had four years of working very closely with my Archbishop in terms of an office similar to this and taking care of the phone calls and the, and the correspondence and that sort of thing. So coming here, I've had a little bit of experience prior to that. And that w one of the biggest problems uh, for you every day, I would imagine, is vocations, isn't it? Getting, getting good people to run? It is, it is, and we do, uh, and I always, uh, whenever I'm out in the parishes or I'm in a school visit, I always pray in the prayer of the faithful for vocations. We're very, very fortunate in this archdiocese, and I attribute this to the dedication of my predecessor, Archbishop Flynn. We started out this year with 68 seminarians belonging just to this archdiocese. I don't know of any other archdiocese or diocese that has that many. Oh, did they be at the St. Paul Seminary? They're both at the uh, um, uh, 31 of them are at the St. Paul Seminary, and then uh, the 37 would be at, uh, at uh, well, it's just the other way around. The 37 are at St. Paul Seminary, uh, 30, uh, 30 are at the uh, College Seminary, and then we have one man in Rome. Now, Your Excellency, there's a difference between a diocesan priest and a, uh, a priest that uh, joins an order like Correct. the Benedictines or the Dominicans. Right. Can you talk a little about that? Sure. The religious communities um, have been founded by a particular, usually a, a, a man or woman who's been declared a saint, They're the, the founder founders of this community, and they have a special charism. For example, the um, uh, Dominicans would be preaching. Uh, the Redemptorists would be in the area of moral theology and uh, moral ministry. Uh, Sulpicians uh, would be in terms of seminary formation and Vincentians would be that s uh, similar. Uh, a diocesan priest is ordained for a local church, for the local diocese or archdiocese. And so the intention, generally in my case it was different, but when I became a diocesan priest I had every intention of remaining in the archdiocese of Detroit for the rest of my life and serving the needs of the church there. And that must have been kind of rough. Detroit's gone through some really tough times. It's uh, really awful. Um, I have a lot of good friends back there, and uh, when I go back, I hear just these horror stories of, uh, of how the economy has um, really taken such a dive. Um, growing up in Detroit, uh, the mantra was always, what's good for GM is good for the country. And I guess that's true, but poor Detroit, uh, I mean, everything was focused in and around the big three. Well, and they're, they're, it's such a powerhouse, I mean, there's so many very important people there coming sure. from there and uh, to see it suffer the way it is especially the, the working class people it's, it's you must have had your work really